What is going on there, YouTube? It's your boy, Jimbo. We're sitting in my 2003 Nissan Pathfinder. Um, we're we're going to be doing a fits on the instrument cluster. A lot of people on the forums have mentioned that their field needle does not read correctly. And that people have mentioned that they have gone to the dealer and had their fuel sending unit or fuel pump replaced without any effect. And I've seen people post um, on the form, Nissan forms that they send their cluster into an eBay seller um, for instrument cluster repairs. Well, today I'm going to be showing you how to do just do that yourself with just with your just excuse me with just basic tools. So, for instance, right now, we're just going to show my fuel needle right now. Sitting a little bit below three quarters of a tank. After I've already put on 173 miles, which I know is not correct. Now, instantly for me, I actually was driving on the highway. I'll re well, backtrack a little bit more. I just had this vehicle, just picked it up about a month ago. And uh, I was driving it. You know, I've been putting in fuel. Well, the one day I didn't put fuel in it. And uh, I was driving on the highway. Ended up stalling out. Would not start. It would crank, but no start. Even though my fuel needle read that I had a quarter tank of fuel left and I was kind of concerned that you know it's something fuel related so I thought maybe my pump was bad and uh yeah I went to the shop and the mechanic pulled the pump out and the whole tank was dry so right now we're doing it before and after I'm also going to show you how to remove your dash to remove your cluster but just again that is what it looks like right now I want you to get a good look at it I'm also going to include a picture of a still so you can see it from before. And then we're going to tear it apart, do the, do the fits on the circuit board, on the back of the cluster, put it back in, and see what it will look like when we're done. So, there it is. Alright, ready? I'm going to pause it, and uh, we're going to get this, this, uh, this dash apart. So, bear with me for just a minute. All right, back for more. First thing we want to do is you want to lower your your steering column down there, lock in place. Uh, take your small Phillips screwdriver. There's going to be two screws up above here, up in the dash. Uh, there's one right there and one right there. So we're going to go in. I can get it. Excuse me, I might need to put my... All right, so we got the first screw started, coming loose. Like I said, you can take the false small Phillips screwdriver and get the first one out. And you got the other one. Yeah, where are you? Right up there. So so here's, here's one screw. Excuse my hand. So one screw there. Another screw. So again, just like a little small Phillips screwdriver for starters and then we'll work on getting the dash apart okay got the two screws out and uh, we're gonna be working on taking this pan apart I just gotta say if you don't have any tools you can go to your nearest Harbor Freight or local hardware store you can pick up one of these auto trim molding set we'll probably be using this one or one of these to get in between there to pry it apart Instead of taking like a flat tip screwdriver and going in between and stretching up your uh, your dash there, you want to be uh, want to do it nicely so you don't see that you've been in it. So we're gonna take this and uh, we're gonna get the trim apart. Stay tuned. All right, got your piece of molding trim removal tool. This and go up in there. Excuse my camera angle. Go up in there. Set this up. Set this up. Think, yeah. Go up in there. Pry it. Push down. Oh shoot! Okay, get your hand in there, and you just gonna should be able to just pull it apart, pull it towards you. I go on each side, just 
I keep moving it towards you. There you go. And there we go. There's your trim piece. Now you're looking at your cluster. I believe there is four more Phillips screws. One here, over there, one down there, and another one down in that hole. So for this tool, you can use one of these retractable screwdrivers. This is pretty handy. It's got the uh, ratchet, like a, like a ratchet, ratchet socket, whatever. It's pretty nice, but again, another Phillips, four more screws, and uh, we're gonna take those four screws out. Okay, I lied. This tool, since uh, the short shaft does not fit in all the way to get the Phillips head out, so resort to just your normal lawn shaft Phillips screwdriver to get the bottom two out. And another quick tip. If your fingers cannot reach those bottom screws, best to get a magnetic extractor and go in there, pick up your screw. Okay, now that we've got all four of the screws out, this thing should kind of slide out a little bit to get to the underneath side. And there's gonna be three connectors you wanna be taken out. So, it's gonna be that one, the one down there, and there's one on the left. You want to take those out. And I think you can just take your finger and pry off the tab. Hold on just a second. Okay, so we got the cluster out. What I found easiest is these pins to hold on the clip here. So I took my Phillips screwdriver. I can't do it with one hand, but I pressed down on that pin and then I whittled the cable to, to make it come out. They're a little tough, so be careful not to, excuse me, pull on the wires. You want to grab on the sides and kind of just jiggle, jiggle it out, but they will come out. There's also actually four plugs. This little plug plugs in the back of the cluster as well. But now, now we get to the actual fixing part uh, behind this cluster. So I'm gonna bring it in, in the shop. I'm gonna have my father kind of do a once over and then we're gonna get to the fixing part. So stay tuned for that. We're gonna get this thing, uh, the back cover tore apart. We're gonna look at the circuitry and see what we need to be done. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Okay, so we got the cluster out. We got the panel off. We got the front uh, protective glass. So what we're doing is we're working on the front side of the cluster to remove to get back at the circuit board. So we're just prying up the tabs. A couple on the bottom. Okay. There we go. This is how you prepare before you take the needles off. This is going to help get the needles back on to the right position so they register the right speed, the right RPM when it's time to reinstall them. So we're going to rotate them all the way around to their natural where they want to stop at. And this one hits, so we'll just help it over so it can get the hits. So now that you have all the gauges at their natural resting position, you use a piece of blue painter's tape under each needle, and we're going to come along with a Sharpie and mark the exact position of each needle. Now we're going to remove the needles. Use us a, a tool. I picked this up at Menards. It's a pry tool kit. 
and you can get it at Harbor Freight and other places as well. But gently get underneath the needle and pry up. Now you can lift the face plate off using a, a smooth plastic pry tool. You don't have to press very hard. Just very gently lift. Now we're going to separate it from the intermediate section of it, the white tab. Be gentle when you're working in this area. This display is still connected. It's plugged in and socketed, but you don't really want to pry out here if you don't have to because this is glass and it will shatter easy. So just be gentle and, and keep a grip on it so that glass doesn't come out. But you'll, you'll work this out and they'll come apart. So we were giving it a visual inspection with a magnifying glass and took some very good close-up pictures of the the resistors and all of these resistors should be 160 ohms so we're going to read 160 159 that's close enough but this resistor reads almost 500 and and I'll go right here I'll put, touch it so we're getting almost 500 ohms. That's way too much resistance, and that would definitely cause a problem with the fuel gauge. So now we're going to do a little test just to prove that that bottom joint is cracked. If we put some heat and solder on the top of that resistor, the solder is going to melt, and look at that. She slid right off. It was That is definitely a problem. Well, we're going to put that resistor back where it belongs. We're going to solder it in correctly, and then we're going to test our ohms again, and it should be 160 ohms. We're also going to add solder and reflow the other three resistors around it. So we're going to put some flux on. It's not mandatory, but it always helps give a nicer solder job. And when you solder these, you only want to do one end at a time. So do the top, 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 and then come back and do the bottom. Because if you go top to bottom, sometimes there's too much heat and then the resistor will budge on you.
and that's it. So after resoldering these four resistors, now when we check the resistors, instead of 160, the total circuit is 121. And before we were reading almost 500 ohms just on this one. So I think we definitely have found the problem. And that's R, this was R99. So we need to lift this display out. So gently using your fingers, don't bend any of these pins, but lift, just gently lift up. And then you can lift this out. Don't drop it, it'll shatter into a million pieces. But now we can put the intermediate assembly back together. Okay. And now we'll put the liquid crystal display back in it. And again, be very gentle with it. Don't bend any of the pins. If you look down in there, you'll see sockets that there's a hole for each pin. And just gently work them. I'll pull back on this tab just a little bit. Very, very gentle. Okay. All right. On to the next step. On to the next step. We're going to put the displays back together here. The overlay. There's the little white pins that we need to press down. Get everything reseated. And now we'll go with needle reinstallation. It's a little hole, and you'll see the little metal shaft sticking up in the center of the hole. Gently drop it down on there. Line it up and press down. But not too far. If you push down too far, then the needle will drag like you see it doing right now. So I'm going to have to raise that back up just a little bit. So now it's time to install the overlay. We're just going to set it on here. And before you lock any of the other pins in, get these tucked in. There's a little piece of plastic sticking up on each one of the gauges, uh, on the large ones. Okay, so they need to be sticking up above the overlay. I can catch them with my thumbnail. Then, once you've got those down, you can go around and press the other little pins into place. And we'll take the big needle. You'll see a hole in the bottom of the needle. There's a shaft sticking up out of the motor. We're going to gently place this over the top. And we're going to keep it lined up with our mark on our tape. And we're going to press down. Okay, that looks good. We're going to, we're going to see it naturally wants to stop there. It's right on our mark. We're going to press down just a little bit, not too much. We don't want to sandwich it so there's no drag moves nice and free and we're going to do that same process to the rest of the needles 
So now that we've got all the needles back where they belong, now you can put them in the correct operating position. All right, so now we're going to get the front face plate on. There's a little dot here where you can stick your uh, little odometer reader. And when you go up and sit it up top, there's a bunch of those tabs you have to uh, snap back in place. But you just want to line everything up how I'm doing here. Don't just force it on. You want to make sure everything lines up. And then go ahead, snap each side in place. And I think I, and the two on the bottom, or four on the bottom, excuse me. There you go. Okay, so now we got the back cover we're going to put on. And again, it's the same way you did this front. You just want to line everything up. Want to get it just where you want it to be before you start pushing. Let me sure everything lines up and start pushing in the tabs. One up top, and then you work on your bottom. Okay. And then you also want to forget your. You also don't want to forget your connector. Go in. Just line it up and push it in. Just like that, there you go. And now it's time for the installation of the lens. And as long as you have this off, now is your perfect opportunity to get some window cleaner and give it a good cleaning because the goal is to never have this off again. So clean it while you have it out. And these tabs just drop into the slots and click into place. Now it's time to go reinstall it. All right, so we're back in the Pathfinder here. We're going to reinstall the cluster. And what I like to do is I want to fold it in and then you want to stick it sideways like this you kind of lay it against your uh, your turn signal there and you can go ahead with the connectors in the back and they're pretty much how they are you know the long one sits in the far left this uh, brown one in the middle with the white plant wet white plug that goes in the middle and the far right one is on the very end here so I'm gonna start from the back I'm gonna get this connector back in, the far left one. I'm gonna go ahead and it's, right, and it's very simple. You go in and you just snap them in place. Oh, well, I guess you do have to put the pin down a little bit. There you go, there's one. Next one is the middle one. Come ahead. And push it in, pull the pin down, and it snaps right back in place. We're going to do the white plug right here. This is going to go back in there as well. And push it in. I also want to get the tab in as well. This might be a little bit tricky. There you go. That one's back in place. And the last and final plug is the far right one. This one you kind of want to rotate it out a little bit more so you got some slack. Turn it in a little bit so you won't be able to see this one. But same concept as the other. You want to get it started, push down on the pin, and then snap it in place. Alright, so you got the cluster reinstalled with all the plugs back in it. We're just going to set it down right here. And a moment of truth, we're going to see what the fuel gauge and all the needles look like right now. But we're mainly interested and what the fuel needle looks like is that is the main issue that everyone's been having. All the rest of the gauges work properly. All the instrument panel looks correctly. So here we go. Three, two, one. 
And uh, if you notice, we were at three quarters of a taint before. We are now slightly below half a taint. So that resistor that was failing had a cracked solder joint is definitely was definitely an issue. And I think we have our fits for the Nissan Pathfinder. Hope this video helps. And uh, we'll, we're going to do another part. We're going to actually make sure that the, the gas light does come on uh, when it gets below a quarter of a taint. We're going to shoot that in a couple days whenever that time is due. But as you can see, we're going to do before and after side-by-side -side comparison of what we started with to what we found the problem with the resistor to what it looks like now. That is definitely a problem and that looks accurate, but I can't know for sure until we see the gas light come on. Okay, update. On the Pathfinder fits with the bad resistor, uh, we've been driving. I've been driving for a while, and uh, here we go. Gas light is on, operational, and it should be reading the correct level now. So if you see, if you do the fits and you see this light, you know you're in good hands. But regardless, you should see that fuel needle jump backwards from where you were at currently do the fits and put it back in you should see the fuel needle drop as soon as you see a drop you know you got a winner but a hundred percent you want to make sure that gas light does come on the light came on after about 65 miles of driving we're gonna go fill her up with 91 octane I know you can put in 87, but you know, for me, I like to throw the premium in it. But uh, there you go, there's your winner. I am so happy you're not gonna run out of gas anymore. That light will come on and it should be reading correctly. Um, tomorrow, I should be getting new LED bulbs, but you're not gonna see it tomorrow. This is gonna be all in one video because we're also gonna replace these dim. Uh, incandescent bulbs. We're going to replace the bulbs. I'll show you what number you need, how to do it. We'll tear the stash apart again one more time. Unplug everything. I'll show you that in the next clip. So there you go. Fuel lights on. No more running out of gas. Thank you very much. Okay, so for the final step, uh, now that you know that the fuel gauge is reading the correct level, it's Kind of best before you put everything away is to replace your bulbs with some LEDs. And uh, I ordered T10 originally. They are not the right size. You need a T5. And I believe the number is 2721 or 2127. Anyways, you need size T5. Those are the smaller bulbs for these. And also a quick tip. Um, you want the black socket bulbs. They look like these. They are located right here, 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 and I believe there's another one. One, where is it? Maybe it is just three. Anyways, there are these little black little sockets. And what I found easiest, instead of pulling them apart, I already ended up breaking one. Let's see here. Which one's the broken one? This is the one that I broke. What I found easiest is when you're taking the bulbs apart, spray some WD-40 in there. Let, don't You don't need to use a whole lot, but essentially spray a little bit of WD-40 in the socket. And then take your needle nose pliers and gently pry up the bulb. It should come off in one piece. Uh, luckily for me, I have another instrument cluster out of a 95 Nissan Maxima and one of these, um, I believe it's this socket. It's a little bit different than the originals that are in it, but it does fit in there. So, like that. So, anyways, that's my little tip. Get any color that you want. I went with some ultra blues, but you need... T5 size, not T10, none of that. You need a T5, 27, 21, or 21, 27. I don't remember. I'll put the link in the description below. But these are what the bulbs look like. A little quick tip for you. Okay, so once you have your LEDs placed in the back of your dash, 
you don't need to plug everything back in. The main plug you want to have is the top right, or if you're facing the cluster, top left. It's this top left plug where the where your coolant level is. This is the only plug you need to be plugged in in order to test the lights on your dash. So once you have the dash back in, and whatever color you went, maybe you just went with white, but you just want to flick your headlights on to right here, just to get an overview of your dash, your cluster. You want to make sure that all your lights are operating correctly and there's no dark spots within the dash. Once you're done, once you see that all these lights are lit up, um, you can go ahead and turn it off and you can go ahead and replug all your connections in the back of your cluster. So we'll be right back. Okay, now that all the connections are plugged in, all the plugs are connected to the back of your cluster. Sorry, the vision is not that great, but all the connections and everything's plugged in. You can go ahead and slide your dash back in place. If I can do this with one hand, I'm sorry. Okay, so you just want to have your dash just like this. Take your key. You might have uh, some things plugged in your high beams or whatnot. Go ahead and start it up. Make sure that all your dials work, all the lights work. And the best thing to do is go for a little test drive. You want to make sure all your speedometer works. Um, if, you, if your vehicle has not been running, you want to make sure that's up to idling temperature. I need to do a good glimpse at everything. But so far, I believe it is reading correctly. You know, like I said, you only you only need all blot just to kind of make sure that everything's working. And uh, we're going to the next part. The next part is is uh, putting your dash back together. Your uh, cluster piece and uh, that is I believe in the back seat wait here, let me just grab it your cluster piece um, for your dash this will go on next and then we also need to reinstall well first we need to reinstall these screws the four Phillips screws to hold in the cluster then we can go ahead and put in the two other Phillips screws for the top pieces to hold in this dash piece and then you're done. And then no more messing around. The fuel light will come on when uh, when is that time. You don't need to worry about running out of fuel. This is your step-by-step -step on how to replace, well, technically reinstall your cluster, how to do the fits to get the fuel level to work and put everything back together from start to finish. So now that you've got your cluster back in and you've done the testing made sure that your lights work all your gauges and tachometer works you know you know after you've done your testing now is now is your time to reinstall the four screws that hold in the cluster they are four phillips screws so just your standard long neck phillips screwdriver would work and go ahead and reinstall the four screws both corners left and right so there there one at the bottom down there and then there's another phillips head down there so reinstall your screws for your cluster okay so now that you get the four phillips screws holding in the cluster now is a good time to go ahead and reinsert your dash your dash piece excuse me for just a second Okay, so now you got the dash piece slid on there like that. Uh, now we need to take our stubby 
Phillips screwdriver. Just a little short little stubby guy like this. Go ahead and reinsert the last two Phillips screws. Again, you want them snug. You don't want them super tight because it's just holding in plastic. So just snug. Yep, just like that. And just like that. Your dash is now complete. And again, it doesn't matter which color you go with for your dash. It's just advisable to, if you have the whole tuster tore part, it's a really good idea to replace the bobs that are behind the cluster. So, anyways, now that that's done, go ahead and readjust where your steering wheel is. And maybe do a light if you want to do a quick little wipe down, you can. But go ahead and let you be. That is fit, that is the finished product. So I hope you enjoyed. Uh, there might be a couple mess ups within this video. I'm sorry for that editing process. But there you go. That is This is what we're looking for. If you've seen the before and after fuel gauge and now you know you won't want out of fuel. You got the new LED bulbs put in. It's definitely a lot brighter than the standard incandescent bulbs before. So if, you're gonna, if you have this problem, it is advised to replace those bulbs to LED. It just fit and finish makes your dash looks a lot, lot better, a lot more brighter, and maybe it gives you a couple of cool bonus, cool bonus points. So there you go. Thanks for watching. Hope this helped a lot of people, and uh, stick around. There'll be more fun in the next couple of videos. So thank you for watching, and stay tuned.